Were you a good boy? Did you pay $18.95 to see good boys in theaters this weekend? I didn't, I just snuck in. <laughs> It's the fourth act. I'm Phil and my normal co-host Alex is absent right now. He got caught robbing Chuck E. Cheese with a BB gun and he's in jail contemplating his crimes. Normally this is where Alex and I take turns going back and forth with the three points. If we agree with each other we get a check mark above our head. If we disagree we get a red X. Since he got arrested I'm forced to come up with something else so we're gonna see how this goes. You're just gonna have to feel it. You gotta improvise and you know the song. I know you can do it! This is the part where Alex tells you to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell but I'm not going to because I don't care what the hell you do. In his directorial debut, Gene Stubnitsky directs the three core boys known as Jacob Tremblay, Brady Noon, and Keith L. Williams in this coming-of-age raunchy comedy produced by Seth Rogen. He's so meta, he doesn't even make a cameo in the film, but he makes a cameo in the trailer. But this is his third coming-of-age story behind Superbad and Drill Bit Taylor, so we'll see how he does this go-around from the producer's chair. And as always, we're talking spoilers. And I know what you're gonna say, Superbad is far superior than Drill Bit Taylor, but I liked Drill Bit Taylor. <laughs> I'm Drill Bit Taylor. I don't want to forget him too much, so we're going to put a little Dr. Pepper can right here. It's homage to my dear friend and co-host. My first point, the kids felt like friends in this movie. They had good chemistry, they were awkward at times, but that's how kids that age are. Sometimes they were too smart for their own good, sometimes they were too stupid. But the inconsistency didn't really bother me, it felt like a natural kind of progression to the story. Agree! Ah! What the hell? Hey man, what's up? What the hell are you doing here? I felt bad about not being here, so I want to be with you in spirit. So just like I'm, like, I'm a figment of your imagination. We. Are. Not. Real. Booga booga booga. Go away, I don't need you. My next point, the jokes don't really land that well. Sure, there's a lot of swearing, and if you think kids swearing is pretty funny, you're gonna have a good time. But for me, it runs its course with the hour and a half runtime. It feels like kind of a cheap way to get laughs. And I, I personally appreciate better dialogue, better jokes in the dialogue, instead of just throwing a cheap swear word in there just to, you know, get a chuckle. That's well, f***ed up. Oh, it is f***ed up. Yeah, it's a f***ing juice box. Because I'm not a f***ing child. <laughs> good, yeah, good one. The situations are kind of funny every now and again, but ultimately it's... It's nothing really memorable. You're not going to be quoting this film like you would be like Anchorman or Superbad or Hangover for years to come. It's kind of just like a watch it, laugh at it, chuckle at it, and then move on. Disagree! Wow. Why are you still here? I actually chuckled quite a bit in the movie. It was a romping good time. Okay, Chuckles, prove it. Name one quotable line in the film. Oh, when they're being chased by the girl to get the drugs back, and the kid crashes into the van, and the girl catches up with them, and they look, the kid's like, oh, she's that's our babysitter. She's trying to touch our penises. That was funny in the context of the film, but I don't think you can quote that line in the real world. Yeah, I'll have this uh, the chicken parmesan, and at uh, one time the babysitter tried to touch my penis. All right then, sir. I'll put the food in and uh, seek mental help. Sounds like you have mental problems, man. Yeah, you got mental problems, man. My third and final point, the attempt of the movie to have heart kind of fell flat. The kids start realizing they're pretty different. You know, one kid wants the girl, the other kid wants to be in the musical, and the other kid wants to just play games and his parents are getting divorced. But it feels just so rushed in the final act of the film that it doesn't seem like fleshed out. It feels like it's squeezed in there. And I get that the friendship's disbanding. It doesn't translate well for me, though. Disagree! That's what made the movie for me! I remember growing up, and all my friends started going places and moving on with their lives, and they left me behind, they abandoned me, so I can relate, I'm, I'm lonely. The whole movie was really raunchy, kids swearing, and then it just kind of felt out of place. It felt like the movie switched gears, and it just felt weird. Nah, man, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that sucks, man. But your time's up, and I would leave, but I'm doing a show, so, uh... Bye. No, man, I don't want to go, man. I'm gonna miss- Well, that was that, whatever that was. Thank you for summing that up. If you're keeping score, that's one agreed, two disagrees, but again, I don't know what the hell that was. To rattle off time now, normally we go back and forth talking about the things that didn't make our top three list, but it's just me, so we're just gonna jump into it. The highway scene is pretty clever and funny. I kind of wish they upped the parallels to Frogger. It would be really funny watching three preteen boys hop the freeway like the Frogger video game. <laughs> Will Forte is great in this. I know he's only in it for like two scenes, but they're very comical. He really shines through. And to cap it off, it's pretty clever when the kids realize that they have to get the drone home before their dad gets home, but they don't need to be home yet. So they fly the drone home. It goes down the chimney and like destroys the house. That's funny because it parallels the idea earlier in the movie where the kid was like, oh yeah, let's just destroy the house and say someone stole the drone. That ended up happening. 
but it didn't happen. Those are my three points. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me. Tell me your points and I'll leave some sarcastic comments back at you. Sarcasm. The cowards lie. That's it for this act. Hope you like our unique spin on our usual shtick. Couldn't really do much because my worst half is behind bars. Next week is Angel is Fallen because if you follow me once, shame on you. But if you follow me twice, shame on me. But if you fall three times, make it a trilogy. That's not funny. Damn it, that's a bad joke. Normally, Alex would tell you to subscribe again, and I would be like, eh, or don't, you have free will. Again, different video, different shtick. So, uh, adios.